All of the here to good evening. Leading our news bulletin for tonight, the New Public Service Commission has announced the appointment of Mr. No Manila Norsa as the new Director of Health. Mr. Norsa has worked his way up the ranks, starting as a lab trainee, progressing on to become a lab technician whilst training in New Zealand, in Wellington, as well as the Starship Hospital. He then returned to Niue to work at the lab in the hospital for 10 years before receiving an AusAid scholarship to attend the Fiji School of Medicine. On completion of his postgraduate, he then returned to Niue a few years ago. He then went on to take a posting as the head of the Public Health Division. Manila says that he is thankful to the government for entrusting him with this posting that comes with its own challenges, but he looks forward to working well with staff, government departments, the community, non-government organisations and government to promote health with the aim of improving the quality of life and health of all residents on the island. We wish Director Nosa well during his term in leadership. The United Nations Development Programme has launched the 2012 UNDP Asia-Pacific Human Development Report titled One Planet to Share, Sustaining Human Progress in a Changing Climate as part of its contributions to the Rio Plus 20 process. The launching of the report in Sa Apia Samoa yesterday was supported by the Samoan Prime Minister Honorable Twilaipa Ayono Sailele Lupe Suriai. Malie Langaoi, who said that it is in the region's own interest to address climate change and do development differently. The regional launch was broadcasted live across the region with the support of the University of the South Pacific, USP Net, connected through the Alafua campus and connected to the 11 other Pacific countries, including Niue. Some of the report's key messages for the region included managing emissions better needs to become an inherent part of adapting and building resilience to climate change. There are opportunities to do development differently, to embed development response to climate change in poverty and inequality reduction. Increasing use of renewable energy and low carbon technologies while reducing the use of fossil fuels can sustain the environment and offer opportunities to the poor, including jobs and better services. Rural households are highly sensitive to climate shocks. Rural resilience strategies should be grounded in human development. Communities that are educated, have reliable sources of income and are more equal will be better equipped to meet new climate demands. World leaders are due to meet in Rio in a week's time to take stock of development progress. Conditions out at sea were quite promising for keen fishermen who ventured out to catch the big one in the Black Heart Fishing Competition this week. The three-day tournament began on Saturday, attracting 31 local canoe fishermen and 13 international anglers. Results from Saturday saw Billy Talangi land the heaviest open-water pelagic fish, a yellowfin tuna weighing in at 13 kilograms and the total weight was also won by Billy Talangi with his catch of 16.8 kilos. The heaviest nearshore fish was caught by Tutuli Hacker with a palungu weighing in at 4.2 kilograms. The boat category open to the international competitors saw the heaviest open water pelagic fish caught by Kalaputuki Tonga, a wahoo weighing in at 26.2 kilograms. The heaviest nearshore fish was 4.6, which was a barracuda caught by Mati Vanderveld who also had the total weight for fish caught at 35.8 kilograms. Overall, the boats managed to land 177.1 kilograms of fish and the vacas managed 84.4 kilograms of fish on day one. For day two, the canoe fishermen landed 20 fish, mostly yellowfin tuna, with the heaviest open water pelagic fish caught by Poikapanga, which was an albacore tuna, 16.9 kilos, heaviest nearshore species caught by Langala Vini, which was a barracuda, at 4.4 kilos, and the total weight for day two won by Puikapanga, who caught a total of 32.3 kilograms of fish. In the boat category, a total of 13 fish were landed, with the heaviest open water pelagic fish caught by Jerry Pattenden, who at 78 is also the eldest competitor with a wahoo weighing in at 27.6 kilograms. The heaviest nearshore fish was caught by Paul Midgley with a dog-toothed tuna weighing in at 14.6 kilos.
The total weight was won by John Douthwaite fishing on Horizon with 32 kilos worth of fish. There's also a skipper's prize yet to be announced at the final prize giving. We did not receive placings for the final day today, but we did catch up with one of the skippers to gauge his reaction to the competition and its benefits to the island. Oh, I think it was really good. I think it was um, well run and the and, uh, um, majority of everyone that competed really enjoyed themselves. We were lucky the first day we had good weather and the last, the last day today is a bit breezy, but um, apart from that we've had a great time and there's been some really good fish caught. It was a good uh, mixture of people. I think some of them have fished before, obviously. Some of them uh, are novice and some hadn't fished at all. But um, they were all keen to give it a go. And I think um, Niue is a wonderful place for a first-time angler to, to experience that. The first two days we had um, good catches. We had four wahoo and a barracuda the first day. And we had the same on the second day, another four wahoo and a barracuda, which was pretty good. Um, we... We didn't take out the heaviest fish on our boat for those two days, but um, they were nice sized fish and uh, everyone on board was happy, so it was good. The obvious um, benefits are the spin off for them, the, the um, anglers coming up here, obviously the hotels and, uh, and local um, produce suppliers, everyone sort of benefits from it. And uh, tournaments like this just raise the awareness of fishing in Niue, and particularly if we get good catches and, and uh, they go away happy then word of mouth just, you know, it's, it snowballs for new It's great. Yeah, everyone's enjoyed it, and most of the anglers have caught a fish. I think we've only had one or two on the last day today um, who missed out, but um, everyone else, to my knowledge, has caught a fish while they've been in new which is fantastic. I'd just like to thank um, the Tourism Office for the, a job well done and, and for the promotions that they're doing, because I think in the... As a whole, it's, um, it's really going to help generate uh, more business for the whole um, Niue tourism effort. Niue Tourism says that the first black heart fishing competition has had a great response with interest from overseas competitors to return. The daily prize giving was held this afternoon at Crazy Ilna, but the overall distribution of prizes for the overall competition will be presented on Thursday at Joanna's. Hakupu Finiane united last Saturday to deliver yet another spectacular show day. The early birds managed to snap up the best. The day began with the blessing and opening of the newly renovated toilets at Tuasea. There were also fundraising efforts towards the renovations of the old school milk shed, which is amongst some of the village developments ahead. There were fewer food stores than usual, but food was plentiful. And the theme for this year's show was Hakupu United. This was reflected in the village extending an invitation to fellow Hakupu brethren residing in other villages and those from abroad to perform a variety of dances for the crowds, adding to their entertainment. But it was the inaugural strongman competition that had many waiting for the open four events that included the tire flip, picking up rocks, putting them on top of drums, the deadlift and tractor pulling. The overall winner and strong man for 2012 went to Clayton Viliamu, second placing went to Mole Makaniwe, and third placing went to Jerome Militolu Tawivihi in third. Organisers of the event, Nisi Marie Jackson and Regan Iwani, say that they are appreciative of all the support from all those who were involved in making the event possible but especially to the nine strong competitors who made the competition interesting. The hope is that in future such events will encourage more competition and generate a love for sports such as bodybuilding, weightlifting and powerlifting. The day concluded on a high note with the village already thinking how to top it off next year. And that concludes our news bulletin for tonight. Do join us again for our next news bulletin on Thursday.